All right, you guys, so we are going to move on now. So we have some other scheduled content to get to. Um, now, there's this event going on in Germania um, called the Arm Armageddon event. So we're, we're going to take a look. There was there's a lot of drama about a, a recent clip. Um, let, me, let me pause this and go back. Um, and let me let me change the scene, of course. Just give me one second. Let me put my clip, not my clip, my cam on. There we go. Um, I'll put this over here. Okay. Is this right? Um, or actually, no, let's pull up the full video. This, this is better. So we'll, we'll, I'll pull it up from the critical moment. It's the right game? No, this is not the right game. Let, let me figure out where it was in this video. Um, where, where was it? One second, you guys. Is it this one? No, it's not this one. I think it's the last one, right? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, let me pull. Let me, let me start at the beginning of the game. I think it's this one, right? Yeah, this this one. Okay. Jose Martinez. So what, what we're going to take a look at, you guys, is there's this event going on in Germany, in Berlin. It's called this Armageddon event. So you play two games of Blitz. If it's tied at 1-1, you play the Armageddon game where the players have five minutes and four minutes, I believe, with no, with no increment, um, something like that. So let's take a look at this game. It's a good thing to breathe, Ivanka. I do recommend breathing. You know, the day you stop breathing is not a good thing. <laughs> And uh, but meanwhile, on the other hand, taking a look at the particular opening, it does seem like this volume should be good. I think price a menu because as far as London is the right goes, game or is this the wrong this game? Like the dream no, this is the wrong game. Right. I mean, seconds left. No, this is the right game. Sorry, wrong, wrong game. Here we go. Maneuver his knight, drop back his light square bishop, and kick it out the kick the black knight away in his own time, a different time. Um, oh. I'm is the volume good? I think it's good, right? Could be louder. The only danger I think with kicking it is that Black might be able to attack the Queen with his Bishop. Uh, I, otherwise, I think it's just a very strong move. And he, he, you're right, though. The clock management, they're both under two minutes now. It's good? Okay. Uh, Dominguez's heart rate still quite... Uh, he did kick it. You've got to kick it away. Now, why not attack... Now, one quick thing that I'm going I'm to say, you guys, for anybody who's watching this, um, it's very important to note... And I've said this before, one of the biggest things that has helped uh, Magnus Carlsen when he plays in um when he plays in events is that I do believe his heart rate in general is lower than everybody else's by a significant margin. I think Magnus is generally never goes about above like 90 to 95. Everybody else's will go into like the 120s, 130s. And I think that's one of the things that helps Magnus more than um more than anybody else. Um, we've seen it in events in Norway. There was some other event where I feel like they had the heart rate monitor for him as well. But nonetheless, yeah, 146, 139 is pretty high. I don't know if it stays that high, but let's see. The queen here. Will he attack the queen? If he attacks the queen, he did. He's getting very tactical. What's happening here? The bishop's attack. The pawns come. This is a key moment in the game. And there's tactics everywhere. 141. <laughs> Staying up there. In black's favor. I mean, it's saying... Although, honestly, we shouldn't make fun of this because those of you guys who are unfamiliar with chess history, one of the greatest chess players of all time, his name was Jose Raul Capablanket, and he was a world champion, great player from Cuba. And I believe that one of the biggest issues that Capablanca had is that um, I think he had high blood pressure. There's a lot of stress, and it's ultimately, I think, what actually did kill him. So, like, it's not actually, it's not a complete joke um, when we talk about this. Because Capablanca, greatest Cuban player of all time. Lenny Dominguez from Cuba. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not a joke. I, I think that Lenny, Lenny, not Lenny, sorry, um, uh, Jose Raul, he, uh, I think that's what he died from. I think he died from having, um, from having, like, high blood pressure and, and heart problems. All right, let's keep going. It's gone. Black's way. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Wesley it, it, so hit 185 in the first round. Was this the first round of the day here? Is this is this first round of the day? Is this Wesley? I mean, I'll I'll come back to it. Was it was it this day or was it another day? I got to see that 185. Um, yeah, any it was day one. Okay, I'll I'll find I'll find it. Still I'll find it in a second. I'd say here, but yeah, I mean that night if it if it can't find a good square, white should just about 140, be right. 145. Oh, yeah. Remember, white is in a must-win situation. I think it's going to come down to the clock. It you know, will like be. These, a lot of these Armageddon games. I have to say, though, with all due respect to the, the people who are putting the show on, first of all, the board is, this color is, I mean, just absurd. But secondly, like, this music is uh, is just kind of killing me, too. This, this like, repetitive, like, beat, beat beating music is just kind of killing me. They've only got a minute and a half now. So much money at stake here as well. You must be feeling the pressure. I mean, at least if Dominguez loses. And that's why also, you guys, this is where I'm going to step in. And uh, let, me, let me adjust the cam a little bit. It's not, it's a little bit uh, low. 
there we go this is where i'm going to step in and say this is why it's really good when you have a job as a professional streamer because then when you have to play in what should be high stress situations in chess tournaments you don't have to worry about these things and you can just relax and try to play your best and your heart rate probably isn't going to go through the roof Pretty good workout yeah. because of his heart rate. Well, he's lost loads of calories he doesn't need to go to the gym today he drops his back night back out. And, uh, again. Um, and not to pause, I'm, I, I'm becoming a pause hobby, but I have a question. They just said that you're losing, they said you're losing calories. Is this actually true? Are you losing calories from having a high heart rate? Because that doesn't sound right to me. I know they're not doctors, but that doesn't sound right. Is that right? Because there's the common saying that you lose 6,000 calories when you play a game of chess. It is? It is or it isn't? I know you, some people are saying yes, some are saying no. No, yes. I don't know. I, I can't tell who's joking and who's not joking. More calculations to be done. So there's so many captures on the board. Bishop takes bishop. Bishop takes knight. Is there queen takes pawn as well? This looks very, very logical because if we look at the... Good for the, Andrew's the up a pawn here. Off, they both have weak or no, it's even material, sorry. Blacks so bishop d6, rook c6. Side where the rook is lining up. Or rook d6, rook d6 also play. Also, this white knight has a lot of potential. But then white's going to go d5, d takes d6, which is scary. Okay, right, queen c5, d5 here. On the board. Yeah. The rook queen c5 and d5. It looked like white won a piece there, but this one fifty is going to get the white knight back. Look, oh, hang on, what's happened to the time? Yeah, that can't be right. Okay, the time, the electronic time is not quite updating. Dominguez has more time than that. Hopefully, yeah. otherwise he'd be in a lot of trouble there. Talking about trouble, I mean, take a look at the position. He's in a lot of trouble over the board. He's dropped a pawn. The c6 pawn is going to fall. Queen takes queen on the board. And now pawn takes pawn. Take a look at that passed pawn two squares away from queening. All he needs to do is activate both King e7, rooks. bring the king. Ah, oh, there's rook d1, rook d7, well, yeah, not so it easy. It looks very good for Andrew Tang at the moment because he has this big, one big edge three. Oh, and as Jovanka says, it's two squares from queening. He's going to bring his other rook over, surely, to put behind it. Get your rooks behind the board and just shove them up the board. A nice, safe move here at the moment. And I'll tell you, the clock times uh. are both down to about 45 seconds left. And, okay, uh, well, staying at 140, though, which is good. Into the middle. The only way that White's going to win this, though, he needs to get his king across somehow. And he's moving his king up the board, but will he be able to get it into the action? Dominguez, like before, just has to keep... Go the around the side, in. right? Go to h 6 7 Andrew maybe? Can win, but he must win. He must win this position. Just keep an eye on the live clock, though. I think this is yeah. what's going to happen. It's going to just come 155. down to what we call the chess <laughs> flagging. Look at that White King. It's a brave king, isn't it? It is a brave king. <laughs> brave. Vamos! I mean... But I mean, oh, it has to be done when both players king G7? are under yeah. 30 seconds left. And look at the king. It snaked its way all the way to G7. Oh, F5, Dominguez okay, good is move. in big trouble, but he FG4, can continue good playing move. because it's all going to fall down. Rook D4, to excellent the move clock. from, uh, from Andrew. Oh, now you well, always why, feel like I, I thought white king is in danger. I thought was supposed to be a hyper bullet player, but look at the time. It's just keep an eye on the clock. They're not getting extra time. It doesn't matter. He is now. Oh, that's a very risky move. He is. It must be going Andrew's way. Oh, look, they, they can't even move the pieces correctly. They're going so quickly here. <laughs> They're B7. moving so quickly. We can't even keep up now. He's got to check. He's going to get a queen on the board. Has he got enough time? He's getting the extra. <laughs> okay, first things first. This is, of course, I, I mean, I don't want to say it's a legal move, but this is one of the problems. Like, rook, that rook is kind of in between. Now, as a professional player, you know where the rook is, of course. Let me go back five seconds. Can't even keep try. up now. now. He's got to check. He's like, okay, like. How do I free? I, I need to freeze in the exact second. Um, just so we can. Or no, this is too far back. Um, how do I freeze it right here? Oh, well, that's a very risky move. He is. It One must second. be going Andrew's way. Go. Oh, look, they, they can't even move the pieces correctly. They're going so quickly here. <laughs> They're moving so quickly. We can't even keep up now. He's got to check. He's OK, so here we go. So this is the first things first. Um, when, you, when you look at this position, uh, this rook is very clearly in between two squares. The rook is between f8 and e8. It's basically a 50-50. Um, now, the thing is, this is where, like, you know that, I mean, Andrew Tang obviously, I mean, not even Andrew Tang. Both players are grandmasters. They've played, played a lot of chess. But, like, here, if you're Dominguez, you could say, you could play, like, rook h1, checkmate, and you lose the game. Because you could say the rook is on e in between the two squares, and you play rook h1 and say checkmate. So, this is why this is why a lot of events have increment, because this is the first spot we see here. I'm actually going to put this at 0.25 speed. Um, uh, how, how to play back speed. I'm going to put it at 0.25. 
but like here this is it's very clearly in between the uh in between the two squares and you can say it's on e8 or f8 now as i said we're both everyone here is chess players so they know what the move that's intended is but nonetheless um this is the first move that is is questionable very very questionable because the rook is in between now of course Lenny here he's like he's such a nice guy that he doesn't do it but I guarantee you there, there definitely are some Russian players who I was playing and stuff they would play rook h1 and claim checkmate they'd be just like okay rook h1 checkmate rook's on e8 sorry um and and that's 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 that would definitely happen but you know Dominguez he's, he's a nice guy so it doesn't happen let's keep going <laughs> Okay, let, let, let's watch it at normal speed, and then when I need to, uh, then when I need to stop it, we'll put it at uh, we'll we'll, we'll put it back at zero point two five. Okay, then I'll do it. Let's see. He's got six seconds. Six seconds to win this. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Wait a second. Wait a second. Actually, as soon as I did that, we need to go to zero point two five speed. Didn't Dominguez go to play King C five, and then he put the rook on D six? Wait, 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 wait a second. That just got really dramatic for for no reason. Let me go back five seconds and play it. Let me go back. Um. What are we? One twenty six fifty three. Let's go back here. Okay. I'll, I'll mute it for a second. Sure. Let's mute. Let's mute it for a second. Um. Yeah. Okay. Check. King c six. Okay. Okay. Now this is this is also very very shaky by by both players because again like Andrew like it, it's it he like he takes the pawn with one hand he does hit the clock I think with the same hand but his other hand kind of gets in the way. Um. And, and also by his other hand getting in the way, this of course is not this is not intentional, but this is a classic trick that hustlers use where when you're playing game without increment, they'll put their hand to block you. So his hand right here that you guys see right here with the sleeve, he's actually blocking Dominguez from being able to get over and hit the clock. So, it's, I mean, it's unintentional, but nonetheless, this is also kind of a, a party foul because the, 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 the hand is just block, it's just blocking him. It's just a great block. So if you make the move, then you have to go over the hand to hit the clock. Also, notice how it was It was also, uh, he also was stopping him. You saw the block. Dominguez trying to get the hand down to reach the rook, but he, he couldn't quite do it. So that, that actually, yeah, that's a great block. Great block. Fantastic. Yeah, he, he blocked him from being able to get the rook. He had, it, it cost him an extra half a second. So, and meanwhile, also, in the meantime, this is also really funny because look at what happens here. So Dominguez has the rook in one hand. And it's like he he hits the clock with the other hand, but also for like a good second there, the, the rook is like the rook is just not on the board and it's hidden in his hand. So this this is really good. Like this is really good. Like, see? So the rook, rook actually goes off the table, so he picks it up with this hand, then he puts it down, and then he hits it with the other hand. And then we get okay, and now we also get a he touches the king, but then he moves the rook. Okay. Um Okay, and this is also good now that pawn is on e6 here too. The pawn is not on f6, so Andrew takes the rook, but the pawn magically moves to e-file. Now, again, this gets even better because now after king d6, I, I don't know if I can freeze it. Um, but you see, he, he takes the queen, he takes, and now you see when he takes the pawn here as an e6 square. So when Dominguez goes king e7, you can just play, or king d6 rather, you can just play king d6 takes e6 and it's a draw. So this is also um another foul uh i mean it's a foul by both sides yeah andrew's watch yeah <laughs> andrew's here in chat i mean this is this is why it's very hard to have these situations because at the end of the day i mean there's so many so many party fouls by everybody that it becomes it becomes comical but let's see what happens here king d6 king d6 <laughs> and then you see you see dominguez go king e6 and the pawns kind of also in between all the squares again here um this, this, yeah it's like this is this is really good i mean just look at this pawn he goes here king g7 and then he yeah and then king <laughs> king <laughs> king e6 and the pawn is just sitting here right in between the two squares so he goes f7 knocks dominguez is king i mean okay at this point everybody's like also i have to also this gets better because the queen somehow is now on g8 too if you're looking the queen is not on the f8 square the queen is on g8 and I'm really... Does this mean he puts the queen on the diagonal from g8 or f8? Okay, he plays queen f6. Okay, now again, this queen is kind of in between every square here. You see, like, this queen is now between f6 and g5. King's on d2, also an illegal move because the queen's on g5, so you can take the king. Doesn't matter. Again, Andrew's queen is magically sitting between g3 and g4. His king is down on the board. Meanwhile, Dominguez's clock is running. 
Um, Dominguez's king goes flying. Andrew makes a move. And now nobody knows what the heck is going on. And, and, <laughs> and this is insane. Okay, so let's watch this at normal speed. Let's let's watch this now at normal speed. Um, let me get back. Like here we go. Let's watch this at normal speed. Okay, now back to regular speed, normal, and let's let's watch it. Can't even keep up now. He's got a check. He's, He's going to get a check. queen on the board. Has he got enough time? He's, He's getting the extra queen. He's got six He's, seconds. Six seconds to win this. The if it's possible, flying. there's rooks off the board, queens off and the board. What, what is happening? It's all over <laughs> the shop here. Yeah. Oh my Two word, seconds. what is it? Oh my <laughs> oh god. My god. <laughs> and that's know. it. Oh my god. Oh, let the clock. Zero versus one. So I, I yeah, so this, this, I mean, this is, of course, really, really hilarious. Um, what was that? I mean, basically, obviously, it's an Armageddon game. There's no increment. And both players made probably at least, like, five party fouls in, in, in that time scramble. Um, so you can't really say, like, one player did something worse than the other player. Um, but that's why, at the end of the day, Armageddon is very... I mean, it's a good concept for over the board, but certainly it's it's an issue versus online. So obviously, when you play online, that, that can't happen where the pieces fall off. Why did nobody interfere? I mean... I don't even know if an arbiter is supposed to interfere there. I mean, I think it's on the player on either player that could kind of do could could complain. Um, but it, I mean, it's one of the reasons that Armageddon's very very shaky at times. Because you know, the other thing I would say about Armageddon though is that I think the rules for the FIDE World Cup or events like that, there is supposed to be an increment at move number 60. It's not straight up Armageddon where neither player gets more time. Uh, at move 60, you do get, I think, a two-second increment. So that's the first thing. We're supposed to stop the clock with four seconds left. It's not happening. Well, that's the other thing. So it's like in chess that you have all these rules about how like you're supposed to do things like someone moves a piece off a square you're supposed to like stop the clock call an arbor all these things but at the end of the day when you're in the heat of the moment nobody's got any time left that's that's obviously not going to happen um so you can't really blame like you, you can't blame either player it was determined to be a win for white i, th I think andrew won on one on time no there was no arbiter there and at the end of the day lenny lenny dominguez's clock was at zero andrew had one second um so yeah it's just I, I think the format is interesting for this, but this really should not happen. Of course, on the other hand, there are people who would say, well, this would, this makes chess uh, more fun. There are people who would say it's like more fun to see this at the end of the day, but I, I don't know. Can they review the game? I mean, I think, I mean, I think Andrew, Andrew won the game. I mean, there's no reason that like Andrew shouldn't get the win, you know, after the fact. I mean, it's, I, I just don't get the point. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun every now and again. Sure. YouTube. I hate it. It actually annoys me. Okay. Yeah, it's like arcade chess. Can we get an endgame analysis? There's not much that needs to be... I mean, what I would say about this endgame, actually, I'll tell you where Dominguez went wrong. If you want my precise, like, actual pure endgame analysis, I'll tell you where he went wrong. Where, where, where Dominguez goes wrong here is at this point when he has, like, I think he even had more seconds here. If I go back five seconds, yeah, he's got 37 seconds here. If, or is that 31 or 37? Yeah, it's 37. So you see it's 36 now. This is where Dominguez threw the game because he has 10 seconds more. And at this point, he needs to just play F5, play fast, and go from there. But here he squanders those 10 seconds because he's trying to be a little bit too precise. And that's what leads to the situation. I firmly believe that if Dominguez had played F5 here with 37 seconds on the clock, probably he would not have lost this game. I'm not even sure we get into that same situation necessarily. But this is where he, he kind of he, he let it let it slip when he, when, he, when he used the 10 seconds to play King F6. He didn't go F5. And then, of course, he does it again later here. At some point. Yeah, and even here, yeah, here's another one where he slightly double clutches before playing it. And that's what leads to the whole situation. So that, that's probably his big mistake. Andrew, of course, is winning the end game. I mean, if he has, you know, minutes on the clock, this is technically winning for White. So it's not really a question. But also, I have to say, I do wonder, did the um, did the organizers, like, put... Um, put um, Put some oil on the board or something because the way those pieces are just sliding all over the place is completely insane like if you look at this like i mean the board looks like it's oiled up it really does doesn't it it's like one of those things where they they they, they have to spray the oil like you do um for uh for like bowling or something it really look it does look very oiled up doesn't it the board is lubed <laughs> yeah i mean it, it really does i'm not i'm not trying to be weird or anything but like, you just, you see the way those pieces are just flying. It's just like, it, it really does feel like it. Cash Royal? Yeah. But it's, it, it's, it's all, it's, it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. But yeah, that's the first slip. Now it's slipping. Everything slides. Everything goes every which way. Um, the pieces slide quite nicely. <laughs> I mean, I think it's probably great, except when you have no time. But yeah, I mean, so many party fouls. Of course, of course, King C3, King V4. 
yeah this whole thing is just uh just really really good so that's the first thing i want to cover we have um uh we also have wesley so you guys said wesley so his heart rate got to 185 um uh i i have to find that you, you guys said it got to um you said it got to one one eighty five, right? Day one, where's day one? Day day one highlights. Okay, day day one. Uh, two minutes. Where where's the? I mean, they're they're live right now. Where where's day one? I don't see day one. I see day one highlights. Uh, check live. Okay. Um. Oh, there we go. So Wesley got to one eighty five. I need to see where where is Wesley at one eighty five. Whoa, by the 83. way. Meanwhile, Wesley So is 148. Whoa, 148 to 83? 148 to 83 in the opening? That's actually really insane. I mean, 148 in like the middle game or any game where it's like starting to get dramatic, but 148 on like move 12 in the opening of a Slav where you have the bishop pair and it's pretty peaceful? That's actually surprising. Eight. Sam's oh, Wesley, broken. Sorry, I got move. that wrong. It's Wesley with a heart. And now he's going up to 152. We have to mention any heart rate over 120 means the player is under severe stress. So the moral of the story, you guys, since you see Wesley at 156, the moral of the story is that chess obviously puts you under tremendous stress. So that's why you don't want to play chess professionally. Because clearly you're under a lot of stress. It's a very stressful thing to spend your time on. So Wesley perhaps Yay! caught off guard and uh, maybe feeling pressure of being in this situation. Of 162? Wait, what? 162? Starting with the white pieces and needing to put the pressure on. No, I mean, the reason I don't understand 162 here is because like in this position, it's, a, it's not like stable, stable, but you have the bishop pair. It's probably a small advantage for white. Very minimal breaks. I mean, your king's not under pressure, anything like that. So that's why I'm a little bit surprised. Go. Oh, the position has changed somewhat because there's been a trade of pawns. So everything is brewing up really nicely. I guess Sam's is broken, right? His is broken. It just says 83, so it must be broken. Battle because Wesley does have the trumps. He's going to get the center. And oh, that's why we see Sam just challenge strike while the iron's hot and uh putting the pressure he's just relentless against wesley it's a very wesley looks so calm because yeah. we mentioned the two bishops and you can Jeez. see that white wesley has those two bishops and bishops they're like arrows they're like missiles they work on lots of open lines and black is deciding to open up the position so generally positionally this will help those bishops and maybe wesley is preparing a sacrifice with that light square bishop maybe now see here i understand that i understand the heart rate getting up because now black is trying to attack like their idea is like pawn takes b4 there's pressure on the c file if you take on c5 this knight on d7 can jump this e5 or c5 square like at this point i understand because now there is definitely some pressure because the game is heating up a very brave move now if the bishop went and captured black's pawn on the right hand side but on the other hand sam is playing tactically opening things mm -hmm. up because it is a risky scenario neither side is castled castling is where you get your king safe why haven't they castled Yvanka? Um, maybe because they were worried about their kings. And we see Wesley just play a very unorthodox move. He drops the queen back to its starting square, getting ready to relocate her to the king side if needed. And uh, wow, Wesley still not casting the king and instead choosing to undermine Black's pawns in the queen side. Yvanka. Instead just accelerating the play. When I, when I very commonly or rarely go down the gym, I never hit 160. This is incredible. The whole game, Wesley's heart rate has been so high. We would never see this in chess. We never see how high the heart rate goes. And there's been many studies showing that grandmasters lose a lot of weight when they're playing chess. And I think that this must confirm that. The position is still fairly even, I would say. I do prefer white. I do like the two bishops, but black doesn't have many problems. This, this is some here. pretty funny he commentary. He doesn't have problems, but he surely must have breathed a big sigh of relief after getting the king castled. And uh, now the tempo is on Sam because he has to justify playing against this bishop pair. And I mean, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. Like, is it actually just wrong? Because I don't know how, I don't know how your heart rate can be 160 here. I don't know how it can be just looking at the position fundamentally um i don't know call the ambulance it must be wrong right i mean right or not i mean i've seen i've seen myself at like 130 occasionally like 160 i i don't think i've ever seen except when i played magnus and we we're like in a massive time scramble at the end uh that's when i think i have hit 160 
a look at those pawns on the queen side. Yes, they're fine. You, you, the you think it's just leave fake? Behind a lot of squares and uh, consequences. Do we get 170? I, I mean, I don't know. Parked itself on b5, and Wesley maximizing his pieces. 170 nearly. They're playing a lot quicker now. Look at the tempo change. Both of them have now spent about half of their time. The good thing about Sam's position is the knights. Knights are extremely tricky pieces. Some people even say that in blitz chess, this is blitz chess, it's very, very quick, that knights are better than bishops because they're more tricky. They're the only pieces. It's gotta be wrong, around, right? It that can't be right. It does look actually very nice for Sam in the middle Unless board. So I think it's still fairly even. It pop. could come down to the clock though. And Wesley has the advantage of 20 seconds. Let's remember, if this clock gets to it's zero, gotta be wrong there's lose. no way you lose the match yeah you certainly do and we also have to remind ourselves and all the viewers that uh, each player gets two seconds upon every move and, uh, 171 uh, you kind of hit the nail on the head there when you talked about the minor pieces for me I think white is a tiny bit better because of the bishop pair, but also because of the knights parked on f6. I mean, I, how can it be? I don't know how it can be wrong. Maybe it's just like not on the right spot on your arm or something. It's too inconsistent to be wrong. I mean, Sam's obviously isn't working, but like you're saying that it's it's because it's skipping so much that it, it's probably not wrong. I mean, really? Have a good circuit. It really wants to fight its sibling there on d5. Oh, whoa. whoa! They're speeding the up there. Aren't they? are now I mean. upping the speed. <laughs> you know, when we see a whole flurry of moves. Now we've gone into an end game, and this end game has to favor white. I mean, I mean, I'm not so sure. I mean, I I think it's. You know, if we look at the pawn structure, there's two things in a game of chess. It's your pawns, which are your foot soldiers, and then it's your pieces, which are your main sort of powerful units. Well, white has this actually weak pawn in the middle of the board, and black's now put a knight in front of that pawn, and I can see that white pawn being lost. And at this level, if you go one pawn down, you're really going to struggle. Uh, maybe just in the balance, but the clock time, to my eyes, is gonna be key. It certainly is going to be key and uh, interesting move that I can't, it can't be right right I mean his structure there on the king side and securing a spot for the uh. knight and we can see Wesley centralizing the queens this is a perfect strategy got to put the queens in the center that, that way they have maximum power and let's remind everyone that they do get a little bit of time every move that they make it's not a lot of time this can't be right two, <laughs> I mean just to help them out here and it seems like Wesley is still very tense there with his heart rate monitor being basically over double of Sam's, which is frankly quite incredible. Those black knights, they're centralized. They're looking very good to me. Black has kept his monster knight in the middle of the board. White now might be trying to swap that knight off, but he will lose the advantage of the bishop pair. I still think it's fairly even. No one has made a breakthrough. No one has won material. Both kings are quite safe, and they're really picking up the pace. Oh, there's a big threat here. A there's five? a big threat. The white queen is threatening to take the pawn with check. Black must do something about that move. He has to either drop the knight back or take a committal move. But, take back the this queen. This can't be right. What happened. the heck? And there we see a trade knight bishop. Uh, oh, but you, you know what makes me wonder whether this could be right, though, not to be the pause Andy here, but the reason is, like, this position is getting a little bit scary now. It's getting very, very tense here, so I could see it being correct, actually. Like, if Black plays E5 and you have all these weaknesses with all these pawns in the center and on the king side, I could see it. This is such a difficult end game for both sides. And are we going to see a trade of queens? If we see a trade of queens, it's going to be opposite color bishop, and it it's is. probably going to be a draw. There's just no way the two pieces can fight each other this can't be right i mean the players it's it's funny these bishops you can look at them and look what color squares i, I mean this the... can't be right because this is just an opposite color bishop ending it's a draw there's no way wesley can stay at 170 here like in a, in a dead draw and end game like this where there's no chance for either side i i don't really i, I don't know it feels like it's a little bit too high did it start to drop the let's squares, see and the other one is on the dark squares i think it's boris spasky who said Chelsea when he got divorced, we were just like bishops on opposite color squares. We weren't really connecting. And the problem with these bishops mm. is that they can't connect with each other. So they just dance around in the moonlight, never really hitting each other. And that's why it's very likely that this will be a draw. One side is gonna have to make a big error to lose, but Sam is down to 20 seconds. But as long as he keeps moving, he's gonna get a bit of extra time every time he 
makes yeah. a move, Yvanka. He does, and he just simply has to dance with his kings, protect the weakness on d5, and uh, just take a look at his bishop park there on d8. It's covering any entry points for the white king. Really nothing that either player can do, just except just shuffle the pieces. It's to and fro. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Thanks so much to Borna for the raid. But I mean, it is. The thing is, it is dropping her at the end of the game. Like, it's not. But 156 is still really high, no? I mean, 156. Sam's, Sam's thing was just bust. That, that does happen. But I mean, 156 is just so, so high here, e even, even at the end of the game. And it's decreasing, which makes me think that it is kind of real. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy, though, right? It's crazy. So, all right, I think there is actually a game going on. So let's let's take a look. What, what is there? There's day three. Is this going? There. Let, let's 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 see. There's there's some games here. Let's see. What are the uh what what are the heart rates of like these games today? This is this Eric or not? Slight advantage to Sam in this position. You yeah, remember? definitely. And it, it also just taking a look at the clock times. It doesn't look like Sam. Is yeah. See, like th this looks like this looks much more like th this looks normal. Like Eric's like one twelve. Sam is at ninety two. I mean, this 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 looks more normal. Like yes, it's a little bit on the upside, but it's the opening. It's everything's very calm. I want to see if they go up to like one forty by the end of the game. And also, let's, let's check go forward. Out. Let's see what's happening. And you can see already here that White has a very nice position, and, and White has just played Yuvanka's idea, stopping Eric. Yeah, see, this looks this this looks this looks actually much more solid. This looks much more solid because again, my my recollection recollection is I played an event in Norway. I think it was a 960 event. And we had to wear heart rate monitors. I think in general I was somewhere around like 110. And Magnus was somewhere around like 90, generally before like it got into crazy end games where nobody had time. So if Wesley's actually one, if we see another Wesley game where he's 140, that's uh, crazy. But does what did Wesley play today or not? Did Wesley play? No, he didn't play. Okay, let me see what happens at the end of this game. Though. Let me see. How, how low do the Eric's trying to create some kind of is marching forward. He was some of his moves. He nearly did a big second as well um i don't okay low on time let's see what's happening probably guess that eric is the better uh very better player when their times get really really short more exchanges coming on the board and i, I suppose that's good news for eric because are they done the showing the heart rate they're done let me go back that then. confident here yvanka yeah. look at 20, 19 seconds 19 already. seconds and uh, sam initiating some trades just to get control of the A-line. This is good stuff. Yeah, see, because okay. this, this looks normal. Like, you see, Eric's got, like, Eric's got, like, nine, 20 seconds on the clock. He's down a minute. A little bit nervous because Sam has more space. So he's, like, 120. I mean, th this looks about right. This this does look about right. Um, So nice. this does look... Comes. This does look correct. Okay, so let's see. Is anybody else... Eric, I guess, won the game or something? XUC hit 200 when gambling? Okay, it's just crazy, though, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. What about the other one? Let's see. How high do the heart rates get here? And it's Ray Robson who has... Okay, pretty normal here too. Like 113, yeah, so 100. Like Dominguez is obviously a bit more relaxed than he was the other day. Maybe getting used to the scenario, the pressure. Uh, you know that everyone's watching your game. You know if you make one mistake, you'll have us laughing at you and saying, oh dear, what an idiot. <laughs> Would we dare say that? No, we wouldn't. But it's, uh, it's a potential. Their timing, like we've mentioned also, it starts very... Yeah, I had I had one thirty at the end of my games against Magus in Norway. I think I mean let me see if I can find that game, the game where I flagged him. Um, Carlson Nakamura uh, nine sixty rook, rook and bishop. I guess it was. Um, bishop. Let me see if I can find that on YouTube because that that's a, that that should be a good one. Um, where is it? Uh, let me let me check it on another monitor. <clears throat> Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Uh, not where Carlson flag, nine sixty. Game one, game two. I'm trying to see if I can find the game. Maybe my mods can find it. Find it instead of me. There was a game where I flagged him in the nine sixty. Um, and let me, let me see. Was it this one? Maybe it wasn't this one. No, that's the wrong one. Yeah, there, there, there was a video. Um. There's a video where I where I played played Magnus, uh, or where I played I played Magnus in 960 in Norway like four year four or five years back, and at the end of the game I flagged him, but I think my heart rate got to like 160, something like that. But anyway, let's see, do the heart rates get much higher here or not? Let's see if we go forward. How how high do the heart rates get? Go back here. What's uh, Lenny Dominguez has done? He's advanced his G.
Block. He's got to play with a bit more passion here. He can't just keep shuffling those pieces around. The more he shuffles... Yeah, this there, looks about right, no? Then, uh, I mean, this looks well, right. You know, he's yeah, this looks completely right. It's like 120-ish, bordering 130. I mean, this looks pretty normal. So I guess we're going to see tomorrow then about Wesley. We'll see We'll see where Wesley's heart rate is tomorrow. Um, Carlson wins and flags. Is this the one? Is there a video of it? Is, is there any? Is there a YouTube video? Oh, there there is a clip. Okay, let's let's, let's watch this clip. Um, let's watch this clip. Overall, because they been... yeah. See, like here we here we are at the end of the game, and Magnus is one hundred and seven, and I'm one hundred and forty six. Like this is the very end of the game when Magnus is seven seconds. So I'm trying I'm trying to flag him. So this actually makes sense. Uh, one hundred and nineteen. It's not that close, but the time five seconds for Magnus four. No. Well, he will, he will have to offer a draw. He cannot just go on and on. Two seconds. One. No, he's going to lose on time. time. And he's lost on time. I'm sure he has. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, so see, this is what I'm saying. Like, you see, like, this is at the very end. This is as dramatic as it gets. And I'm at 147. So, like, that's why, I mean, the Wesley one, we, we have to see tomorrow what, um, what Wesley's heart rate is actually at. <laughs> we have to see tomorrow what, um, what Wesley's heart rate is at. 120 is low. Yeah, Ma that's what I said, though. I said Magnus's heart rate is generally a little bit lower um, than everybody else's, which I think is one of the reasons that he actually does so well in these critical moments, is that he actually has, like, it, it is lower in general. So these are the verse element for the raid. Appreciate thinking of Bortnik Chess as well. Um, grave background. Yeah, that's actually Bobby Fischer's grave, you guys. This is from Norway. I played against Magnus, I think, 2018 Fischer Random World Chess Championship, and this is Bobby Fischer's grave that... They, for whatever reason, had on the wall at the at the place we we're playing. Don't don't ask me why they had a picture of Bobby Fischer's grave there, but they did. So it is what it is. Um, that's creepy. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. Let's just have the grave behind everything. Um, and go from there. Maybe it works out more. Sure, but that's actually not the point I'm making. Um, well, that's part of it. But like what I was saying is like I'm really curious about Wesley. Like, is Wesley going to be like 170 tomorrow or not? I look younger now. Well, I'm I'm more in shape. I'm happier. Life is better. You know, when life is good, it's always. You're you're always you're always gonna look better. Just reality. Um, so yeah, so that, that was that was that clip. Um, but yeah, so it looks like nothing nothing too crazy here. And I guess tomorrow. Well, I'm not streaming tomorrow, I guess, but I'm definitely gonna pay attention and see uh, see what's going on. Less coffee can help. Wesley does drink a lot of coffee, right? Wesley is one of those people who drinks um, who drinks a ton of coffee generally, so it does make sense. Anyway, I'm gonna start playing some Blitz, and we're gonna keep moving on. Um, Unless there's something else to cover, but I think I think we're, I think I'm gonna look to play some blitz and we'll we'll just keep moving on. So let's see who's online. Nihal's online. I'm gonna challenge him to some blitz. He's like Una twelve for the five X Biggie for the nineteen. I, Lester Highway for the seven. Tech Monster for the fifteen. Adiel for the eighteen. El Geisto for the five. Then you Nem RG for the two Gigettes. Then you Marshall. Then you Tanner Comer. Lucky Duck. Then you to fourteen. Trebuchet with the prime. Bruce the Fan Dam with the prime. Mining Canal with the prime. Hitman with the tier one. And AG Demos with the prime as well. Appreciate it. So, okay, let me send out some challenges. Uh, Farouge is online. I'll play him some Blitz if he wants to play. Or he doesn't want to play. Okay, let's see who else is online. A lot of people online. Um, challenge Benjamin. Benjamin Bach is online too. Okay, let's see. Farouge is online. I'll challenge him as well. Not possible because he's offline. Unfortunate. I'm a Frozen fan, yeah. Play Daniel. Daniel's not online either, which is kind of annoying. Um, let's see. Down bad, yeah. Amon is online. I mean, I just want to play some Blitz and try to get my rating up. Uh, Jordan got his first two GMs days ago. Very nice, very nice. He was talking to Bornick before the raid, but yeah. Who was? Who was talking to Bortnik? Oh, right, let's play some Blitz. Let's play Dropstone. I played this guy in the Speed Chess Championship. Let's go D5 here. Play Bishop F5. Okay, very standard. He plays H4, I think. Oh, no. He goes Knight F3. I'll play E6. Harvest him. I mean, I just want to play some good Blitz. That's what I'm looking for. Let's go Knight E7 here. Keep it very simple. That's, that's what we're doing. Play A5. Do I exercise? Of course I do, yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't know how specifically that stuff. Oh, big shout out to Ludwig, by the way. Apparently Ludwig is watching. So big shout out to Mr. YouTube himself. 
uh, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, hope he's hope he's doing well over on that uh, that site that's owned by Google. I'm gonna trade some queens here with queen a6 of c4. I will take. I can also play knight f5 or knight g6. So yeah, it's been a long time since we've seen seen Ludwig um, since we've seen Ludwig on Twitch. But obviously, I'm sure he's involved with the um, with the uh, streamer awards event. So yeah, nothing but the best. Okay, I feel like I have h5, bishop h6. I can play a bond cloud with king e7, but that doesn't make sense. So let's just go here on h5, I guess. Oh, I'm actually a moron. H5 takes bishop. Oh, wait, no, he's queen f4. Never mind. Forget what I just said. I'm an idiot. Um, so yeah. Queen h5. I think I'm gonna go um I'm gonna go knight f8 and knight g6 here, maybe. Or did I just hang something? I should have played knight g7 first. It goes g4, I'll play knight g7. Then knight g6, I guess. Guard the rooks now, he can no longer take. He can't win materials. I can play h5 if I want to. I don't know if it's a great move. On the flip side, what else am I actually doing? I can go king d7, maybe? Don't love it. I think I, think I will, though. I'll go here and then maybe rook g8. I'm looking to attack on the king side at some point. How am I doing great? Thinking of magical lines with prime. Appreciate it. Thank you so much h3 rook h7 and rook h8 to stack and attack is a move i'm just gonna go for this I mean, it's very basic to play rook h8 and stack but it looks like a plan you need 24 ounces of water for every cup of coffee for your cellular cellular structure to not be affected by it crazy okay let's go h5 here okay now i'm going all in with the big attacks i've stacked the towers now, it's interesting because here I can actually take with the e-pawn if I want and go knife to e6. I'm going to take so this way I can stack the knight and then go knight here. My knight has a great access point to this f4 square via e6. See, because the thing is here, like, my knight doesn't have squares. Like, the, even if I trade, the knight is boxed. I don't have jumps. But now I get this great square to jump to f4 from. And if I get a knife on f4, I get knight e2. Uh, now, do I take? I assume I do. I'm probably just going 96, just blockade. And now each three is weak. The stack is making sense. D's knights are making sense. My position is very harmonious. Have I ever eaten Indian food? I've, I grew up in the United States. More specifically, I grew up in New York. So if I had never eaten Indian food, there would probably be something wrong with me. Not to mention my stepfather is Sri Lankan, amongst other things. I don't know what that question was. Um, yeah, I, I actually don't understand the question at all. Sorry. I think I'm winning here, by the way, because my, my queen side is safe. My queen can be activated easily. I just have perfect harmony from all my pieces. Okay, if I take... I mean, this looks horrible with, with these rooks on the, on the open lane. My queen can get in very quickly as well. Let's see one. Wait, what am I missing? Out of Bezos's pocket. Thanks. Wait a second, wait a second. I, I, must be, I must be smoking something. How is this not just winning? Huh? Yay! What am I missing? Don't I just have 92? I mean, D's knights are great. King G3, 92, and he just gets forked. Yeah, this is not how you play chess. Uh, okay, Duda. I just go... Oh, wait, he has King F5 or something? No, but this, this is just lost. I check. King F5. Only move, otherwise you lose the knight. I mean, if this isn't mate, I don't know what chess is. Check and just rook f4 is mate and uno. Thank you so much to Blightly S for the two. Braden for the prime. OVG and Beard. Sen for the prime as well. Thank you so much. Go here. I can play c4. I can also just play like e3. I'll play c4 here. And probably e392. Keep it simple. d5. Play here. Just think about which line I'm gonna play. Did I win the Twitch award? I don't know, you guys. Um, and it is what it is. Now, I could take. I can also just play like Knight F3 and D3. This is very standard, slow stuff. I'm gonna go D3 now. Since we traded here, I'm gonna try to use the open lane with Rook B1 and maybe move the Knight so I can scope on the diagonal as well. Go here, target the pawn. Probably Knight D2 in a move or two, depending what he does. I think I'm gonna play Knight D2 right away. I can always castle, so I'm not in any rush to castle. Can Alejandro Ramirez still play in FIDE tournaments? I mean, as far as I know, he can, yeah. 
I mean, I don't, I don't think there's anything that prohibits him from playing. I mean, as of right now, at least. Hi. I mean, obviously, I could change. Fide could do something. Who, who knows? Either with Pepper Chest for the ninth, or Smelios as well. Uh, I guess I'll just castle. He's gonna try to play B6 somewhere in here, so I'll go Queen A4, hit the knight. Is my brother in chess? Yeah, my brother uh, was about master level player, very very strong player. How do you feel about yourself making me watch six ads? It's not how do I feel about myself. It's how do you feel about Twitch making you watch six ads? Now, of course, if you guys do have Amazon Prime, you're spending about 120 bucks a year to have that to get those sweet sweet Prime deals. My man hang up, hung upon, I think, or maybe not takes takes. Um, you're spending 120 to get Amazon Prime. You, you can connect your Amazon Prime to Twitch Prime and subscribe free for zero dollars every single month. Take five bucks out of that Prime subscription and give it to your favorite streamer. That of course would be me. So make sure that you do connect your Amazon Prime and Twitch Prime and um, use it. So if takes, I just take with a bishop here, and I'm doing great. I could I could have taken and then gone like I don't know like bishop e, d7 or something, but I don't see any reason to be silly. So we'll see. I guess if takes, you just take with the bishop here, probably. That's my plan. Just activate the bishop. Because you look at this bishop, it's, it's not really doing a whole lot. If I go this way, the pawn chain is guarded. So the bishop doesn't want to go this way. If I go here, the pawns are still very solid. And so I'm going to, so by playing f4, I'm trying to activate the bishop on a better diagonal. Now he goes f6, which feels a little bit strange to me. A little bit strange. Um, now here I can actually win a pawn, I think. Oh, no, I can't because he takes with the knight. What am I thinking? Okay, so let's go. If I take, take, queen c... I think I'm going to... Mm, I think I'm going to go bishop f4. I don't know if it's the best move, but I, I pin, pin the bishop and the knight. Takes, which is a move. Um, hmm. I guess I'll take. I don't know if it's right, but I'm going to take and take, I guess. And play like e4 maybe e probably not a great move though it's an okay move it's not the best move goes g6 which i don't actually like at all um uh, i feel like there should be some way maybe like uh maybe like rookie one here ideas like d4 or something no rookie one's actually a terrible move let's go here target the rook of course i want to go bishop e6 but it does nothing so let's play rook f3 just consolidate here uh, I'll play a4 to stop b5. Can I play the English? Um, sure. I'm going to try to set up a wooden shield here with bishop d5, by the way. There's no b5 here to distract the queen, so I go here. And, I mean, I've got the wooden shield in place. So with the wooden shield, this should be very solid. I think I can play d4 even. I feel like I'm getting some play here. Yeah, maybe just d4. In the legman, just subscribed. H4, queen g4, king g2. Oh, he's got queen d2, which I didn't see. But I have rookie two, maybe. Okay, now I have queen c8, but that's not actually winning. e5 looks very scary. I think I'm just going to play king g2, just make my king safe here. Plays a6 logical. Rook b2 is a move. Rook b3 is a move. Queen b3 is a move. Queen c8 is a move. Rook e f2 is also a move. Um, but I'm getting low on time, so I just need to like come up with a plan. So I'll just drop back. I'm still looking to play e5 here. So I'll take. Do I have e5 not here. Maybe I'm gonna go here to attack the rook, and then d5 probably, and then e5 next move. I can almost pre-move d5, but it's probably not a safe pre-move. But now e5, and I mean... f6, I guess I drop back. Go there, maybe? Try to win on this diagonal. Let's go check. I mean... I think I'm just threatening checkmate in Uno with the classic. Oh, he's got that move, which is good. Um. Oh, why did I do that? Wait. I'm gonna have to flag him.
Oh my gosh, I flubbed it. Why did I do that? That was so stupid. Should have made the draw. Thank you, I am telling man, thank you to Frendon. I threw that game like an idiot. Should have just made the draw. If I don't hang the rook, I would have drawn, but ah, whatever. Yeah, so stupid. Let's go here, e6. Yeah. That was so stupid. I could have taken the draw multiple times, but yeah, that's what it is. Ridiculous. Eh, it's life. Yeah, he defended well. I mean, he did defend very well. That was on me, though, because I should have a few, probably like two or three moves before I kind of just threw all caution to the win. Um, I should have, that's what I should have done. I did it a few moves too late because he would have flagged for sure if I had done it three moves sooner. And by sooner, I mean when I played a rook f8 or rookie eight, rook f, rookie seven check. I should, I, all of that, that whole operation, I should have done that much sooner. Because take, play b5 here, keep it going. And also, when he played queen before check, I didn't realize the rook was hanging on f8 or I would have played rook f4. That was actually a big mistake by me, too. Yeah. Unfortunate. But wins are plus four. Wins are plus four, which is good. I mean, I think I can beat Paravian by a three to one margin. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's go here in 95, I guess. And also go 95 this way. Or 94, but I think. Hmm, let's think about this. Okay, I don't want to get too stupid on time with my time situation here. So let's think. Okay, what are the moves? C5 is a move, knight a4 is a move, knight of d5 is a move, bishop e4 is obviously a move, h6 is also obviously a move. But I'm thinking way too long already. Uh, yeah, what? I'm just thinking way too long. I don't know what I'm doing. I go here and take. Assuming this isn't some huge blunder. Uh, knight g4, that's not a great move, I think, but it's a decent move. Drop back. I mean, c5 is a big move. h5 is a big move as well. He's using a lot of time here. Take the queen. He's going to go queen h4. I'll go c5. Open up the whole position here. Should be very, very slightly better for me because his pieces are a little bit misplaced and my king is very safe. Queen is way on the edge here. And there really are no attacks. I have the d file so I can create the kebab. His bishop not great staring at a closed diagonal as well. So it should be pretty good. It was queen g3. Now, again, I don't see the idea. I mean, rook d2 looks like... Uh, rook d2 wants to go queen f4, I guess. Knight a4 is also a move here. Or knight c4. But I'm going to go to a4. Now, pre-move takes. Feels like I'm better. I just don't know if it's winning or not. But, I mean, these pawns are very soft. And I can create the classic kebab with rook d2. As long as the kebab exists, I should be doing well. He goes queen f4, which just allows rook d4, I assume, to hit the queen. Queen b4 is a move. Rook b4 is a move. Rook d2 is also a move here. Rook b4 looks like a good move here somehow. Or f5, f4, also interesting, but I don't love it. Yeah, I think I'm going to go here to hit the queen. Rook c1, rook b2... I also have bishop e4. Ah, uh, rook c1, I have bishop e4, and I, I win the queen in the corner. He takes, and then I take the queen. And this pawn is very loose, too. There are also ice skaters existing. Yeah, the ice skater is a very serious threat here. This should be winning for me. Uh, I'm just going to play h4 here to play against the pawn. Go f5. Oh, I allowed rook c4, which also just unconscionable by me. I uh, guess I'll play e5. I'm going to have to flag him probably. Although, maybe not, because bishop b5 is a big threat. Also, his pawns are fixed on light squares. These pawns are on the wrong color. The same color as my b-shop. So, I actually think maybe I should be winning here. Let's go f5. 
Yeah, these pawns are on the wrong color. They're the same as the bishop, so I should have good practical chances to win this. Like, check in here, even. Yeah, it's just winning. Okay, there we go. Better. Thank you so much to McKay, Madsen, Lulz for the prime. Let's play G3, bishop G2 again. Uh, let's go D3 here. Probably knight D2 next move. Maybe E4, maybe knight F3. I think e4 is okay. Knight g4 to knight h3. Takes takes queen f3, I guess. Maybe not. Okay. Let's see. One, king b1. It goes for it, so I'll take. I mean, I can take d5. I can also play b3. Takes b3, queen a5. Yeah, I'm going to go b3 here on bishop b2. I mean, knight d4, I also, I also have queen h5 maybe as well, I just realized. Queen h5. Queen f6. This is very dank. Bishop d4, e d4. If I take, he takes, king c1. I mean, maybe I'm missing something here, but I think my king is just running over to eat the knight. I mean, we'll see. It's, it's hard to judge what's going on here. It's queen b4, which I assume is his idea. If he takes, I just take. Okay, it's queen b4. I can just play queen f4, I think. Unless I'm crazy, which is always a very likely possibility. Okay, so I assume I just... Now, I can take d5 too, but I assume I just take the knight. Okay, he's going to go a5, a4, try to do something on the queen's side. This could be very scary, actually. This could be very bad. Um... Uh... How do I get my pieces over? Maybe I go knight b1. No, but then a4. There's got to be something here, but I, I don't have a lot of time to figure it out, which is also a problem. Just take and play like rook c2, I guess. I mean, I also have rook c7. He takes, I take, I guess. He takes, which is definitely a move. Um, oh, wait, it gives me rook c4, though. Do I play rook c4 or not? I think I do. No, rook c4 is a ridiculous move, actually. Just a completely ridiculous move. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. What the heck was that? And now I just lose the game. That was just completely ridiculous. Why, why did I do that? I don't even know what that was. So I take and go. B2 probably win. I mean, there are probably many ways for black to win. Playing some really, really bad chess at the moment. <sighs> yeah, I was just losing. Uh, very bad. Yeah. I mean, that was just ridiculous. I don't even know what that was. Horrible. Keep going. Oh, is he going to stop after a couple of games? Really? He, he says he's got to go or something. Really? Ridiculous. All right, let's, let's play somebody else then. Thank you so much to Shiver. Thank you, Chase Hughes. Shiver just took $5 out of Bezos play somebody pocket. else. Thanks. Yeah, leaving with the ELO, I mean, he's so lucky. If I flag him in the second game, he, he'd just play, he'd play as many as he could to gain rating points. But whatever. All right, let's find somebody else to play. Thank you so much to Ashrex for the prime. Um, thank you. If there's anybody else to play. Actually, Joppy's online. I'll play Joppy. Yeah, it's annoying. 
It's just annoying because, I mean, I, I, I should have flagged him in the second game and I, I messed it all up for no reason. So, whatever. Yeah. Uh, when is my next OTB tournament? Um, probably, um, probably in probably St. Louis in um in a week. I'm still not 100 percent sure if I'm going to play the event. Um, well, that's coming. Not really, but I mean, I feel like there's a certain unwritten rule that if you're going to play, you're going to play blitz games. Like you don't just show up for two games or, or or things like that. I mean, you normally play a bunch. Um, I mean, that's actually one of the reasons I don't play much on stream because, like, normally if I'm playing, like, I only want to play long stretches. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to play in St. Louis next week. I would say it's most likely I will, um, but I'm not super, super happy about the situation. That's a simple answer. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's what I would say. So, yeah. Can you remember your worst competitive chess game? Yes, it was a game against Magnus Carlsen. Cheer up. Oh, I'm fine. I'm just annoyed. I'm just annoyed because if I flag him in the second game, he, he would have played. He would have played like 10 games. Um, it's also annoying because it's very hard to find games. So, like, when you, when you actually play someone... Um, when you actually play someone, like it's since it's so hard to find find anybody to play against, like when it's like a couple of games, it's also kind of annoying because then it's like you're back to start start you're back to like the beginning of everything where it's like you have to find a new opponent again, which is quite frustrating. Um, not this guy again. Let's play e5 and takes. You got you guys don't like Rustamov. I mean, he's like the only dude to play online. I mean, I'm I'm probably gonna lose rating points, but I just want to play. I just want to play like a nice series of games. Uh, let's just play A3 here. I don't even know if it's good. Um, I guess I'll drop back to A2. Call Wesley, yeah. I'll play rookie one here so I can take with the knight. Okay, uh, let's go here. Maybe knight E4. Knight F4, I just go queen D1. C3 doesn't look right, so let's play knight E4. Okay, so I can obviously take the knight on d5. I can also play a4. I can also play c3, maybe. I don't really like c3, but it looks like a good solid move to play here just to consolidate the chain. Um, and we'll see. He plays rook b8 here. Okay, logical. So I'll go bishop d2. Play rook d1. Bring everything to the center of the board. Queen c7. Just making sure there's nothing hanging here because it's very easy to miss something. Drop back. He can obviously take. I'll just take with the knight. Is chess falling off again? I mean, again, this is a tip topic that everyone always talks about. Remember, after Queen's Gambit, everyone was saying the same thing. It's like, oh, no, chess is collapsing. Like, the, the boom is over, blah, 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 blah. And um, at the end of the day, it's been pretty amazing. Obviously, there are a lot of events going on. We, we're streaming. There's Pro Chess League, etc. cetera. So uh, the numbers are higher than they probably have ever been before. So when people say falling off, I mean, again, like, that's like, I, I think when you say that, it's just, it's not a good way of looking at things. Not Wesley's heart needs to break. I mean, I assume the heart rate monitor was wrong for Wesley. That's all I can say. Are there more online turns compared to OTB? There are quite a few OTB events, but uh, there are more events online now than at any other time, really. So it's, it's a good time. Yeah. Okay, I mean, this looks horrible. Look at these double ops. Look at this king. Look at these pawns. Yeah, not, not very good. Five hundred seventy-nine thousand players on Chess.com. Yeah, Chess.com is a uh, booming, and that's being like generous. Chess.com is just on fire. Uh, I'm gonna go Knight H5 here. I mean, again, this just looks horrible. I, there's just too much scope, too much scope, too much pressure. Bishop F8. I mean, again, I just does not look right. Oh, I can also just take actually. Yeah, the, the knight is just loose. The juice is loose here, and I take and wait or not. Okay, so I take. Uh, excuse moi family fork time with knight f6. Not good. Let's play c5. Let's play like, okay, let's take. Let's go here. Let's go here. Probably knight f6. Okay, now how do I want to play this? Bishop c5 is a move. d5 is just very solid. I think I'll just go like here in castles probably. Maybe just b6, bishop e7, bishop a6. You gain two but lose 12, indeed, indeed. Welcome to my world of, of uh, difficulties. I assume. 
I assume I play bishop f6. Don't know if it's right, but it feels right. Was bishop d7 next move? Was Jobaba's banning justified? I mean, I, I what I would say on that topic is like, I mean, either you think it was too little or you think it was too much. I don't think there's any in between, really. I'm going to go Bishop A6. There's no in between. So no matter what chess.com did, it's, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. I think that's the saying, if I remember it correctly. That's the bottom line. I mean, there's just, there, there's no happy answer any way you look at it. Um, okay, I can't move my rook as E4. So what am I smoking? Um, um, I guess I'll go here. A knight b4, maybe? It goes knight d4, which I don't really believe in. I'll play rook c8. Knight f5, I just move like queen b4. Or even takes and bishop e2. I'll play rook fd8. I can also go g6. Knight b4 looks like a strong concept, but it's probably not right. Or, yeah, let's try it, though. Let's try it. Knight c2, maybe? So... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, for me personally, I thought maybe it was a little bit too long, but that's just me. Um, I take and go knight c2. I thought maybe it should have been like six months instead of 12 months, um, but that's just my personal take. Um, but I think no matter what they did, nobody was going to be happy. That, that's the bottom line. Take the pawn. I mean, I'm up a pawn here. This is also, I'm, I'm just smoothly on my way to a win. Um, this girl wants to hang out with me after dinner, but I don't want to miss the rapid tournament. What do I do? Um, uh, skip the chess tournament, of course. There are more important things than playing a rapid event of chess. Um, if you skip the St. Louis tournament this year, it could be, um, it could be a great way to show solidarity to all the victims of the Me Too abuse by Ramirez. I mean, I'm, I'm debating, I'm debating some things right now. I'm, I'm very unhappy with the situation. Um, I mean, you know, I think it's, it's been what? It's been not even one full day since, since the article, since everything completely broke loose. One second, let me focus here. I can play rook fd8. I, I need to think. Give me one second. Um, I don't want to play queen c3, but it's an end game. It's probably good for me, so why not? Um, uh, the, there was an article on the uh, New York, uh, was it New York Times? Not New York Times, sorry. It was Wall Street Journal. Hmm. I guess I'll trade. I can play b5 here with rook c2, but I don't love it. So I think I'll... Also bishop c4. Yeah, I think I'm... Um, I'm going to try it. It's probably... I probably mess this up to where I'm not winning, but... Yeah, I completely mess this up for no good reason. Completely insane by me. I'm going to trade the rooks, I guess. Even this doesn't work either. Let's do this. Um, I guess I'll play h5 maybe i don't even know if h5 or h6 or what the best move is but um yeah what, did, what why did i even do this this is ridiculous I'll, I'll just play h4 you can take and i'll just go like here we get a trade i mean no but why i mean that's just nothing that's so stupid by me at best this is a draw at best I might even be losing here if I'm not careful. <sighs> yeah, this is completely insane by me. I don't even know why I did this. Heck. Yeah, I think I think I'm just gonna stop you guys. I'm just I'm missing everything now. It's ridiculous what I've done.
Oh, no, this doesn't work either. What am I doing? Ugh. Okay, yeah, that's ridiculous. Maybe with Prime and Coffee, just ridiculous. Every, every player I play right now, I'm just blundering for no reason. Yeah. Go here and trade. Yeah, everybody, I did this against the against Peravian too, where I'm just like blundering for no reason. So stupid. Okay, I'll play five, win five, get to th get back to 32, and then I'm just gonna call it a day. Yay! And it's just so stupid by me. Marobo just took Go here, Bishop B2 and A3. Thanks. Love a good stream. Yeah, I mean that was so Thanks stupid. I just, I mean, I was up a pawn, no issues, and then I found a way to lose for no reason. Just insanely ridiculous. Go here. So stupid. Let's go here. Rookie one next move. Ludwig's still watching? I guess, yeah. It doesn't make me feel any better considering I'm playing horribly. Go here. What is he doing here? This this is just better for me. Let's go here and take. What is this? They just missed that the rook was hanging. Very strange. Go here. Oh, he's got queen a5, which I didn't see either, but still very good. Oh, I probably also had some trick with g5 that I missed as well. Wait, so I played d5. This looks pretty good. I'm going to do it anyway. e5. Okay, I guess I go... Here to take the open file, of course, and then just d6, d7. Should just be winning. He's thinking for a long time. Let's see what he does. Thanks for shot, Mr. Oboe, for the five months. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Mr. Oboe. Um, I think G5 is fine. Now, now the bishop is stuck on the edge. Actually, it's plus three right now, not plus two, at least, since my rating is so low. There is no way a Japanese samurai grinds on the chessboard. Uh, okay, that's kind of weird, but okay. How much would it take to paint that wall another king? Thank you so much, Amazing Digger, for the Prime. Um, another color? I don't know. I don't know about that. I can also just go d7, maybe, and just rook, rook c8. This should just be gg. Okay. He did have bishop e7, but I had a very funny trick with b5 there that I would have played. I mean, this is just gg. I'm covering the pawn still. Yeah, it should be gg. He's got queen b6, but bishop e3 wins the game. Okay, let's go again. What did I play? I played C5, right? Yeah, and I lost against this, which is just insane, too. Let's just play... Um, just let's go, I'm going to play a traditional uh, Ben Oni. We're playing a Ben Oni here. Play A6. This is a classic Ben Oni. Then I 7 and Queen E7. I played this against... Um, who did I play this against? I think I played this in the U.S. Championship. I played like Knight H5 here, which is a dubious move, but you're induced. I had this against Alexander Onishuk in the 2000, uh, 2006 U.S. Chess Championship where I played the Ben Oni. Let's go Queen C7 and Rook E8. And I, like I induced uh, Onishuk to play G4, Knight F6, and go from there. Thanks to Barzerbat. Thank you to Chloe. Thank you to Ixmal for the prime. Knight D2 is a move. Um, I'm trying to remember what I did, though. 
Not c4. Maybe I just played rook b8 and b5 here. I'm going to play rook e8 here. Maybe knight e5 somewhere. I mean, I do have h6. I think I'm going to play h6 g5. Why not? This might be terrible, but I don't care. Because now the queen's no longer on d1 to target the knights. So I'm trying to grip the dark squares here. Like knight e5, knight f4, get d's knights in the game. Also, he goes knight c4. I thought I had b5 here. Um, wait a second. Play knight e5 too to grip. Yeah, I'm going to play knight e5 to grip the dark squares. Kind of just get this massive grip. Goes a5, which is interesting. I can still trade, though, and go bishop e5. And I still get the grip with the wooden shield. And knight f4. It's not the dream, but it's playable. And I can always go b5 to open up this uh, file. Knight a4, also a strange move that I'm a little bit confused by. G4 is not the move I want to play. Bishop D7 is not the move I want to play. Queen A5 is not the move I want to play. Huh. Not F5. I guess I'll just go here. Why not? And play like rookie 7, rookie 8, and go after this pawn. Ah, uh, okay. So he has a specific concept in mind with B4. I'm not really worried about it, though. Hmm. I want to play bishop d4, but I also... Hmm. Maybe I played this completely wrong. I think I did play this just very, very poorly. Okay, so we trade. I go here, of course. Oh, I bishop c3! Ay, ay, ay. Bishop c3 just wins the game. <sighs> just wins the game. That's how you know I'm not playing well. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, I'm still probably going to win the game, but unbelievably bad. Yeah, I'm still going to win because luckily my position was that good, but still. What does it mean if I saw a move and he carved in? It means you're probably going to be one of the best chess players of all time. That's what it actually means. So congratulations. That's what it means. You're going to be one of the best players of all time. Um, let's see what he's going to do here. Thank you so much to Eglimp for the prime. I mean, of course, I take the juicer. The key is how do I play this? I have b4. I mean, I can obviously trade. Wait, how do I play? I think I can also go rook c7 maybe. No, I don't want to go rook c7. Knight d7 maybe. Yeah, I think knight d7 is a pretty good move here. So he trades, and then I go like bishop c3 and rook c8. I'm going to go rook c8 next move. I should be winning here. Do I want to take the bishop or not? I think I'll go here instead. Until I just blundered. I might have just made, um, that might have been a big blunder by me. Okay, I'll make a check. Go here and rook c2. There, there might have been some bishop b6, bishop d7 idea that I missed. Yeah, I think there was, but whatever. Who cares? The game goes on. Because now I'm infiltrating. Yeah, rook c2, rook a2. This should just be very simply winning. I also have rook c3 to trade the rooks. Did I have bishop e1 also? Maybe I had bishop e1 too. Check. I think I'll just go here, trade the rooks. Again, should be pretty clean. I always have rook b2, and then I can just start pushing the pawn. He's going to resign here. Or not. Okay, let's go here. Nice Hawaiian shirt. Thank you so much. Let's go B5, B4. Okay. Three to go. All right. Let's, um, what did I win with? I don't even remember what I won with last time, but I'm going to play G3. Actually, I'm just going to play more Ben Oni with D3. Let's go B4 and A3, I guess.
Yeah, we're just, I'm just going to keep playing the Ben Oni Wan Kenobi here. Am I beating Prime Fisher in Classical Chess? Probably, but I don't think it's... I've said before, it's not a fair comparison because, uh, you know, the game is built on the backs of the legends. The, you know, the game of chess, we, you know, we've, we've gotten so good at it because of the, the world champions before us. So it's not really a fair comparison. And, um, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, it's what it is. It's what it is. I'm playing knight e4. I can also go knight c2 and bishop a3. I think I'm just going to go here and force a trade of knights. Yeah, I mean, you just, you just can't compare. Of course, of course, I'd be better than Fisher, but Fisher also doesn't have computer programs. Like, it's just not a good comparison. I mean, it's just not a good comparison because we're all where we are because of Bobby. Um, I'm going to play f4. I don't know if it's a good move, but it opens up scope for the bishop. I mean, I have rook b7. Doesn't look quite right to me, but maybe it's okay for black. So yeah, I mean that, that's a simple answer to your question. It's just it's not it's not a fair comparison because I mean we're we're all just so 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 much better because of Bobby. I'm gonna play rook f2 here. I still have bishop f4 to hit the queen. I still have knight f4 too. I'm a snob. That's what Fisher would say. He might say that. Yeah, I, I don't doubt he might say that. Um, wait, I think I'm going to go here because if G5, B7 hangs, like he, he can't actually, I'm threatening H3 to just finish him off. He does that. Okay. So if I, wait, I have to think if I play H3 takes, takes Bishop E2, wait, three rook F5, and I'm going to play H3 here. Let's take. I mean, I have rook b7 and rook f7. I have, like, castle mania on the 7th here. I take, and I mean, there's rook b7. So I take with check. He can't block, and he loses the queen due to the pin. Uh, this is just gg. Okay, two more to go. King has to go back, and then I check him, and then I fossilize him, and it's just all a disaster. All right, let's keep going. I'm going to play more Ben Oni. See what he does here. More Ben Oni. Dorky 8. Plays Queen D2. I think this is one of the other variations that's playable, but I don't think it's supposed to be great. Now I have C4, actually, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I think C4 is a move here. Because now there's Knight C5. Also B5 here. I mean, if he takes, I just take. So I go b5, of course, to guard the juicer. Now I have knight c5 and knight b3. Doesn't look right. He could still play bishop c2, maybe. It's not completely over. Hmm. Knight d4. Whoa. So if I take his b4. Wow, what a move. Knight d4, what a move. Is it a good move or a bad move, though? d3, b4, wow. Okay, I don't, want to, I don't want to get too fascinated by this silly game, so I need to focus. Maybe a great move by him. Maybe I just go like knight f6 or something, or bishop d7. I think I'm just going to give him the pawn, and I'm just going to go b4 and play this, like, something weird. Just, like, b3, maybe? Or knight f6? Doesn't feel right. I don't think it is right. I think I missed something there. There should have been something better than this, but... Life. Okay, but I go b3. Okay, this doesn't look right at all. Let's go... Go here, attack the pawn. He's probably going to have to take... I mean, maybe he can go queen f4, but it looks kind of weird to play queen f4 here. I also have b2 somewhere in here as well. Like b2 and queen b6, depending what he does. 
Did I blunder something here? Ah, uh, here's this. Okay, and if I take and I go here. I'm guarding everything, kind of. Let's go here and win the pawn. I mean, I still have a very advanced pass pawn, but sooner or later I'm going to push to b2. I missed a fork, not shocking. I mean, b2 is still lurking. I still have this pass pawn, which is very dangerous. I was blockaded by a bishop, but the bishop can't really move either. Um, yeah, he's trying to go knight f7 or something cheesy, which I don't really want to allow. I play h6, knight f7, rookie 7. That's actually probably okay, but do I have anything better is the question. Can't move the knight. Queen b4, queen d5. b2 is a move, maybe. I think I'm going to go b2 here. And then, like, queen c4. I got to cover the, the diagonal to this pawn, basically. And, I mean, this pawn is very advanced. I mean, this is the one trump I have here in the position. Thank you so much to that not DT for the Prime BV Wolf. Thank you so much to Hit Hitler and thank you to Kronosos. Thank you so much. Um, I mean, I can play Rook A8. It doesn't do anything, though, does it? He just goes back. But he's burning taunt. Uh, ta what? I, I mean, I can't do math, but isn't that just free material? That's not quite right. I think I trapped the Pokemane here. The queen is stuck. He, he loses his queen. Queen is completely toast. All right, let's go G3. I'm going to play C4. Let's just keep playing the Ben Oni. Just keep playing the Ben Oni. I'm going to play something a little bit different this time. I'm going to go knight h4 and probably knight e4 just to trade some pieces. I think I'll play here to hit the pawn maybe. There's B6. So now I have 94. I'm wondering if I can go F4 here. That's one of the moves that I'm wondering about. Yeah, let's go for it. See, he's kind of overloaded. Everything is a little bit overloaded here. The bishop also can be, be tickled a little bit. Everything's overloaded. So because everything's overloaded here, I assume that I should be winning. I have F5 or 94. I'm going to go here to hit the queen first. And then I'm going to go F5. Yeah, and now h3 threatens to win the bishop. f6 is a huge problem. I think I'm just winning here. I did win the last game. It goes there. I mean, f6 must be crushing. Look look at d's knights right in the middle of the board. Uh, well, this also just ends the game. Knight f5 was also probably just crushing. But we got the dub. Big dub. Yeah, I mean, this, this is all crushing. When he goes like queen e6, knight f5, d's knights, they're just perfectly placed along with the rook. I even have bishop h3. Nothing he can do. So, yeah, 3201, it's decent, not the greatest result ever, but that's how it goes. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to be calling it a day. I know it's been a pretty, it's been a pretty, or wait, no, there's PCL. Okay, fine. No, we, we will watch, maybe PCL, who's playing? It's not Magnus, so, no. All right, you guys, so I'm going to call it a day, and um, it's just, you know, kind of a short stream, obviously. It's a Wednesday, that's that. Um, but we'll be back next week, probably like Sunday, Monday. I'm um, taking a few days off. There will be some more content on YouTube while we're taking our break. Um, so there'll be some more content on there. We'll come back next week, um, and we'll just keep rolling. So I'm going to call it a day, you guys. I'll end with the outro, and I will see you guys all, um, all, all either on Sunday or Monday. See you then. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. When I see some of these moves that computers suggest after a game that I play, I just go, wow, that is the beauty for me. Because these are not moves that I would ever consider. And when, when I then see the move, then like I might make a couple of moves to try and understand why. That is the beauty to me.
trying to play as well as I can, and I don't really worry. Like, if I lose a game, it's not the end-all be-all. I'm not naturally talented, but if I don't get something, I'm, I try to figure out why don't I get it, what am I doing wrong, over and over and over again. Bye, 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 bye.